I like to investigate a little bit more the aspect around the product here. So what you were doing before and what problem we're trying to solve and how um, the merge with the other company evolved the product and what type of use case you were able to serve in the marketplace. We all know that uh, curve sell up sell it's much easier uh, and, and less friction than you know doing a new a new sell from scratch. So uh, you know being able to integrate their software with uh, the written next data sources and written next products gave us a, a very good platform to go and say, hey, we already use the written next product for you know camera tracking, inside analytics. You know this is an add-on that we can have for your marketing team. So Rita Next, uh, to put on very simple words, it's the Google Analytics for the physical world. So Rita Next uses cameras, devices, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi signals to understand traffic, shopping behaviors inside the store, shopping patterns and analytics, and really you know what Google did for the web, that you understand what people went to the website, how much time they spent there, you know what products they were looking for, how many of them were into the basket, how many of them they shop or they abandoned you know, read the next data for the physical world. So really understanding what's happening in the analytics of the physical world. By joining forces with read the next, we can have a use case like we can personalize or arbitrate an offer being open at someone's couch as they're browsing the web based on what people like them that fits into their profile are doing in the store closest to them, right? So it's the idea to bring the analytics and the knowledge that we're acquiring in real time for, from the stores into the marketing and, and the dynamic world. So let's say that we have a specific store. There are a lot of customers around the store looking at the website, opening emails, receiving SMS. As you say, it's a flow, the continuous movement of conversation back and forth between the consumer and the brand. And let's say that we're talking about a big box retailer and they have currently no traffic on the toys department and the toy inventory on that store is pretty high. So automatically the AI application can detect that partner and now people that are opening emails or clicking on the SMS or joining, walking into the store, getting receipts at the point of sale, we can then prioritize or put a little bit more emphasis on offers for toys because that's what is actually will be helpful to impact the bottom line for that store at that moment. There is no movement of shoppers in that area. There is, no, there is a lot of inventory, so we need to get rid of it, or we want to make sure that we minimize the cost impact of having that overstock on the inventory. So that's, once again, uh, uh, keeping it uh, uh, simple at the highest level, a way that we can use you know, an AI-like machine learning platform to detect those patterns and then to act in real time. I think the most critical and important thing for marketing and for business of the AI revolution, if you will, is the component and the word real time. Real time overcomes history. We can have petabytes of history and that's all great. That all you know, creates a CRM database. We can use it to study analytics, to create customer profiles and things like that. But the idea is that real time overcomes history. So I went to a big box retailer and I bought a low more accessory eight months ago. That's a great piece of information. What is that telling me about Paolo going to a store and buying today? Maybe not much. Right, so I can build the most predictive model, and I can build the most beautiful, you know, logistic model for propensity, and say Paolo has 90% of propensity of chances to go to the store today and buy some new shoes. So one of the most important thing is how we leverage real-time information. How do we feed the real-time information to an AI machine learning ecosystem, and how can we react in real time to that signal from the environment? And how do we do it? within 200 milliseconds or less, right? Because you know the shopper's not gonna wait there for 10 seconds or 10 minutes for the engine to react and then send a message or a signal back to the shopper.